Welcome back. Let's get to seven, problem 7-9 from the fundamentals. And this one's very similar to um, problem 7-8, seven, seven, the one that we just did in the past video. Except we have a distributed load which is uh, which has a triangular shape. Okay, So just remember that the area underneath the beam, okay, uh, sorry, the area underneath this curve gives you the resultant force. Okay, So in this case, the resultant force of this 6 kilonewton force, it's going to be the area of a triangle, right? Base 3 times height 6 divided by 2. Okay, and that will be the resultant force of that. However, just like in the, in the last uh, video, I am going to make a cut right here. Or, you know, or you can make it here or here, it doesn't matter. Okay, and I'm just going to look at one little piece of this beam. Okay. Boom. Right. And then, we know that this is size X or length x okay there's nothing here and then we have a little bit of the distributed load left here okay and now this is only for triangular um, distributed loads we have to scale the distributed load and I'm gonna call it W here okay because it's not 6 anymore 6 is all the way up here at the this height and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, just set up a proportionality. So I'm going to say W is to X, right? What 6 is to 3, all right? And this will give me a new distributed load, which is scaled to size X instead of 6, of uh, 2X, okay? So it's 2X kilonewton per meter okay and then let's now let's draw the forces so we know that there's internal forces here we have v1 and let's not draw n anymore we're professional now let's, we're over n okay and then we have m1 okay there's no forces here there's no support Okay, that's why I'm looking at this side, so that I don't have to solve any supports, okay, or reaction forces. And then all we need is the, uh, the resultant force of this distributed load. And just like I was explaining in the beginning, I said, what is the area of a triangle? Well, it's going to be the height, 2x, times the base, which is x, divided by 2. That is that distribute. That's the resultant force of the distributed load. Okay, and then let's just set up our equation. So, f of y. Okay, it's going to be uh, that looks like x squared. Okay, minus v one equals zero, and then that'll tell me that uh, v one is x squared. Okay, and this is my interval here is going to be between 0 and 3 All right. and now let's just set up our moment equation about 0.1 okay and then what which moments do we have or which forces contribute to the moment well we know that this resultant force will con contribute to this moment okay and we need to find this distance right and I'm going to let you guys think about this while I set it up. <clears throat> what is that kind of distance going to be? Think back on the centroid of a triangle. Okay. So first I'm going to add M1 here. Because we know it's a counterclockwise torque. Then we know that force, that resultant force, is going to cause a counterclockwise torque. And the force is X squared. Okay. And then what is that distance? Equals zero. That distance here is going to be x over three. Okay, it's hard to see, but x over three. Okay, because we know that the centroid of a triangle. If this is a triangle. It's going to be like this, where this is one third of the height. 
this is two thirds of the base and this is one third of the base and that's where the the center of gravity is okay and I think you guys either covered this already or no 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 you guys will be covering this in the moment of inertia chapter okay <clears throat> anyway so just keep that in mind don't forget that so yeah x over 3 so here we have our equation set it up it's going to be minus x cubed over 3 okay and let's see so this so we got oops here we have minus x2 I'm sorry minus x squared this is minus you see so I took the derivative here and I it was wrong it didn't match up so I quickly went back and I realized that I made a mistake here it's negative x squared minus v1 equals 0 and now these derivatives match up okay okay now let's set up our shear moment diagrams okay and again we're lucky to only need to need to only have to do one cut okay um, okay so let's let's do it a different way this is the way that I was taught to do them do them all in one graph this never matches up nicely though I'm gonna say this is This is three, this is three, zero, zero. Don't forget to put your units. I don't do it because I'm lazy, but you guys will probably get points taken off if you don't uh, put your units for those, okay? So let's, okay, this is the moment and this is the shear diagram, all right? And so notice how here for V is, it's a quadratic function and here's a cubic function okay so I'm gonna plot multiple points so I'm just gonna say I'm gonna do one two and then three okay and same thing with this okay one here's two okay and I'm gonna start with v1 so evaluating at zero so zero squared zero perfect Okay, 1 squared, it's 1 times negative 1, so right here, then I have, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm going to say it's 9, it's getting out of hand here, okay, and then plotting it at 3, I have a negative 9. Okay, so there we have our shear diagram. It should be Q, a quadratic function. So it should be a downwards parabola, okay? It's not the best. It looks like a straight line, but it should be quadratic, okay? Don't forget that. Now we're going to do this next one. So evaluating at zero, zero. Okay, and that makes sense. The, f the free end, the ends of the beam shouldn't have a moment unless there's a moment on it already, okay? So, and then this is not a free end, so we're going to have a moment at A. But here, there's no moment, so we should have, we should expect a zero moment, okay? Now, let's evaluate it at 1. So, 1 cubed is 1, so this is minus 1 third. Okay, then two cubed. Okay, divide. Uh, so it's a over three. So I don't know. Let's just say it's here. This is minus eight over three. Okay, and lastly we have. Uh, evaluating at 3, so it's 3 cubed, okay, divided by 3, and then we get 9. So I'm just going to say this is negative 9 down here. <clears throat> and this one should be a much steeper one, okay. They look almost the same, but they're, but they're not, okay. 
so we should have a negative 9 here. Okay, and that's it. That's our shear diagram over here. And our moment diagram. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. I hope, uh, you know, I hope so far you've been able to keep track, you know, follow these tutorials and, you know, follow the examples. Um, hopefully, um, we're going to get into some better ones. All right. If you have questions, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video.